Planned Parenthood of Montana becomes one of the largest victims in the Ransom Hub attack. In August, Ransom Hub stole about 93 gigabytes of data. Then in September, it published screenshots of administrative, financial, and legal documents on its leak site. Planned Parenthood took measures to isolate parts of its network to prevent future problems. Ransom Hub is behind 200 similar attacks. A group of bipartisan senators introduces a bill that aims to improve cybersecurity in healthcare. The Healthcare Cybersecurity Act encourages collaboration between the Department of Health and Human Services and the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. The bill will also make cyber threat defense resources available to non federal entities. The act comes in the wake of the change healthcare attack that may have exposed the data of one third of Americans. If passed, the act would increase cybersecurity risk training and improve coordination efforts between CISA and the HHS, improving communication and collaboration during cybersecurity attacks. The Texas Attorney General sues the Biden administration over the HIPAA privacy rule. Ken Paxton says the 2024 update to the privacy rule hinders state law enforcement investigations into abortion and reproductive health care cases in Texas. He wants the federal court to vacate both the 2024 update and the original privacy rule, which was enacted in 2000, claiming HHS exceeded its authority. HHS defended the updated rule, saying in part, quote, the Biden-Harris administration remains committed to ensuring that no woman's medical records are used against her, her doctor, or her loved ones simply because she got the lawful reproductive care she needed. A warning to cryptocurrency companies from the FBI. North Korean hackers are using social engineering tactics to steal digital assets. The FBI says hackers impersonate contacts or recruiters to target their victims, gain their trust, and then use malware to steal their data. The hackers typically speak fluent English and come off as credible. The FBI urges companies to improve their cybersecurity to protect against these attacks and to not store information about cryptocurrency wallets like passwords, wallet IDs, or private keys. Investigations are ramping up following a massive data breach at National Public Data. The Florida-based public records data broker specializes in background checks and fraud prevention. A class action lawsuit was filed in August of 2023, saying the breach exposed the personal information of 292 million people, including the social security numbers of 272 million people. That's 60% of all social security numbers ever issued by the IRS. It also says the information has been used in identity theft and fraud. The breach is particularly concerning because national public data collects and stores massive amounts of personal data and sells it to a wide range of customers, including private investigators, public record sites, human resources departments, and staffing agencies. An Illinois home care service experiences a data breach impacting more than 26,000 people. It happened in March when someone hacked into the Help at Home network, exposing the personal and medical information of thousands of people. The information exposed includes names, birth dates, social security numbers, financial information, usernames, passwords, and more. Help at Home began notifying those impacted in August. Palbox's breach report shows network server breaches were the leading cause of data exposure in March, affecting more than 2.7 million people nationwide. New findings from the Verizon Data Breach Investigations report show some concerning trends in the world of cybercrime. The report analyzed 30,458 security incidents and a record-breaking 10,626 confirmed data breaches in 94 countries. It found stolen credentials account for 24% of breaches, phishing accounts for 14% of breaches involving compromised credentials, and the report found it takes less than 60 seconds for users to fall victim to phishing emails. The report also found malware continues to be a big problem. Ransomware and extortion techniques were involved in 32% of all breaches. Ransom demands have gone up, averaging around $46,000. A data breach at Fortinet exposes files stored on a third-party cloud-based file. Fortunately, the incident affected less than 0.3% of Fortinet's customers. Fortinet says there's no indication it led to any malicious activity impacting customers, and there's no evidence that other Fortinet resources were accessed in that breach. Two Connecticut healthcare providers are victims of cyber attacks involving compromised email accounts. Both United Way of Connecticut and Yukon Health experienced cybersecurity incidents. United Way was the victim of a phishing attack in September affecting 8,000 people. And in June, Yukon noticed suspicious activity in an email account 
and says someone accessed personal information. Both providers began notifying patients in August. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, Medicare or and CMS, and Wisconsin Physicians Service Insurance Corporation, or WPS, have started notifying about a million people million of a data people. breach. The breach happened in May of 2023 and stems from the Move It software vulnerability, which impacted numerous healthcare organizations. According to CMS, names, birth dates, social security numbers, and more may have been accessed. CMS and WPS say they are, quote, currently not aware of any reports of identity fraud or improper use of the information. It is providing resources to people to monitor their credit. A data breach for the Providence Public School Board causes a week-long Internet outage. The board, which oversees 39 schools in Rhode Island, sent a letter to families alerting them of the September 11th breach. The letter said it shut down its network after detecting suspicious activity. Internet access was down at all PPSD sites, and the district is now using secured hotspots to keep services running. The hacker group Medusa claims to have 200 gigabytes of data, including parent emails, phone numbers, and addresses. Medusa has threatened to leak the information unless a $1 million ransom is paid. So far, PPSD has not paid up. Senior primary care facility Welcome Health is the latest victim of a cybersecurity attack. Someone apparently hacked into an employee's email in July and accessed patients' private information, including names, dates of service, diagnoses, and treatments. Contractors' names and social security numbers may have also been exposed. Welcome Health says it has no evidence that any data was used for identity theft or fraud. Welcome Health said notification letters out in August detailing what happened. Atrium Health, a North Carolina nonprofit hospital network, is the victim of a phishing email attack. The nonprofit says someone hacked several employee email accounts in April and may have accessed names, addresses, social security numbers, medical record numbers, and more. It's unclear whether the person viewed emails or attachments in those email accounts. Atrium Health says it does not believe the information has been misused. A Wisconsin County security breach leaves questions over notification delays. Breach happened in October of 2023 when someone accessed the personal information of more than 76,000 residents. Richland County didn't notify residents until August of 2024. The county says the personal information has not been misused, but residents have taken to Facebook demanding more transparency and questioning the county's 11-month notification delay. A potential data leak at Dell may have exposed the information of more than 10,000 employees. A hacker group known as GREP allegedly stole the employee information in September and leaked it online. This incident follows another data breach at Dell earlier this year, impacting 49 million customers.